Hello, welcome back to another uh, podcast video for our anime for all podcasts. We're in season four. We're reviewing My Hero Academia along with the host with the most spirit punching helmet. Hey, everybody. I need to get a clip of that because I also got a Steam Deck that I haven't set up yet that I can have that play. <laughs> yeah, I do have a Steam Deck. I'm not kidding. I mean, it's not going to really help us now because I don't have it set up. I can tell. What the heck is this? Oh, someone else just went live. Okay. Well, we're here to have a review episode 2 of Season 7, Spectre. Uh, this episode was uh, not tearjerker, but I will say that um, the feels were here. They were everywhere. They slapped you in the face with the feels. I don't know how I felt about it. I feel about it, but uh, like uh, like I was telling Spear over here, that was a, you know, this was an episode because I kind of at the end of it kind of sniffed. I mean, I guess there's no dan dancing over it. Episode two, Spear, a uh, star and stripes dies. I almost said Spear dies. And I'm like, I was like, yeah, sorry to break this to you. You, you, um, you're actually a ghost in your in your own wife's house. Um, that's probably why your that's probably why your cats are probably ignoring you. <laughs> or, hmm. Jeez. You need to spice up your you need to spice up your love love making just die and you'll be able to <laughs> actually I hate that because that actually makes sense rigor mortis is a uh actually I'm wondering nah, I shouldn't wonder I shouldn't wonder this out loud. I was, I mean, what I was wondering, and for sure I feel a lot of people are probably where we're going with this is, um, I'm wondering if you die, do you have a boner? Because <laughs> like every other orifice of your body lets things out. Why not your penis? Could you die with a boner? How do you know? People get people. There are people who um, who probably look a bottle of Viagra. Who? <laughs> oh, you you have. Uh, I guess I have access to that too. You really gotta type that into Gemini. Oh dear God. Did you make it answer? Cause I'm pretty sure chat TPT would do the exact same thing. I, I mean, I don't know, but. This question is any discharge. <laughs> Learning with the enemy for all pocket. <laughs> How did I? How did I segue from my hair academia to boners? <laughs> huh?
I know that's what that was like. You told me you were dying, and then you told me you was your you was your you and your last kink. And I'm like, oh, I just. Right. Wait, that's where that's where being hung. Oh dear. The human body is a wonder. Wait, what? Did you say angel rust? Angel lust? In a turtle erection? That sounds painful. The idea is that, I mean, oh no, sure, trust that. <laughs> I can't I'm looking at this right now. Now none of you guys look this up either. <laughs> Especially if you're underage. I, mean, I know that there are like, you know, injuries that guys can sustain down there, but the fact that I was honestly kind of hoping maybe that wasn't real. I don't... What? I mean, here's, here's as much knowledge I know about anything about the female body in terms of like really weird things. I know I looked this up after wondering, getting kind of curious because like guys get a thing called blue balls. And I was like wondering, I wonder if, there, if there's a female equivalent there is, and it's called Blue Bean. And for people who know what that was referring to, you like, I was like, hmm. The death by hanging, whether in kitchen or suicide, has been observed to respect the genitals of both men and women. And women, the labia and clitoris for me have been engorged and made a sort of blood for no Oh, wow. Oh wow, so when the guy dies, they don't they don't ejaculate, they just either let go of urine or whatever else is in there. Oh, that's Okay. Apparently this phenomenon was a recurring theme in the writings of William S. Burroughs. Naked lunch in cities of the Red Knight. Apparently, the clerk, clerk's movie, it, it, it happens. Scene in question involves a male customer passing away of a heart attack in the bathroom of the store after recently reading an adult magazine. He's.
Oh. I apologize. <laughs> this is a hole that I dug, I dug us into. <laughs> oh dear god. Well, I guess, you could, I guess you can't consider us not a learning podcast. I don't see any, so I'm pretty sure they're gone. Not, not that I want to see. I mean, even though I have the question, it's not like I actually want to see. I was just, I was just curious. Okay, curiosity has been satiated. I guess. I, man, take blame. We lose any viewers. <laughs> Then again, who knows when we got more viewers. I should title this thing Death Erection and see what happens. Actually, I know what would happen. YouTube would ban me, so never mind. Uh Angel List? I don't know if You know, man, we, we could talk about anime when I <laughs> if like for the people at this point if you made it to this point of the podcast uh I thank you for sticking it through that not necessarily long segment but um that wasn't even it's nearly, that wasn't even really supposed to be a segment it's just a part of the whole I guess the journey through the mind in this in this podcast um and in the really weird places we go sometimes. <laughs> I mean, shoot, like early in the podcast life, we were talking about sand boobs. Am I reading that correctly? Will it related injuries and deaths? Okay, the, the the infants dying in toilets. I I I I I've heard about. Oh, wooden toilet seats. That's horrible. You know I. So this should be higher up on the list. Maybe they're looking for, you know, idle bidets or something. Toilet is so collapsed or shattered. I always wondered about that sitting on a toilet, like how much weight is a toilet, you know, Tested for. Because you think about over, you think about really obese people. Like morbidly obese, like you, you can't imagine their toilets are made for that kind of weight. There was a Nobel uh, Prize given in 2000 for a uh, Glasgow Western Infirmary. For a 1993 case of report of wounds sustained to the buttocks due to collapsing toilets. What the heck? Toilet related injuries are surprisingly common, with some estimates ranging as high as 40,000 in the US every year. 
In the past, this number would have been much higher due to the material from which the toilet paper was made. Wait, what? Splinter free toilet paper. I guess it is paper. Wait. Are we wiping ourselves with paper? <laughs> well, duh, it's toilet paper, but still, like. I like how they, I like how they, they made sure you, you made sure that you, you knew the Python survived. <laughs> Wait, what? We Elvis died on the toilet. Mm. Well, he was definitely doing something. And I've been saying, like, I mean, he was definitely doing something if his, if his pants were below his ankles. The 2001 Sopranos episode shows a fictional character depiction of a risk. The risk when the character GG. He still has a heart attack on the toilet of his social club while straining to defecate. Exploding toilets? In the Victorian era, there was a perceived risk of toilets exploding. These scenarios typically included a flammable substance, either accidentally or de deliberately being introduced into the toilet water and lit a match or cigarette, light igniting and exploding the toilet. These 2014 Sion Sloan's Flushmate Pressure Assisted flushing system, which used compressed air to force waste down the drain, was recalled after the company received reports of the air tank falling, failing under pressure, and shattering the porcelain. <laughs> That's what it says. That makes sense. Wait. Uh, apparently this is a historical death. Um, 1945, the German submarine U-1206 was sunk under a toilet accident resulted in seawater flooding in the, into the hole. <laughs> which, which created a chlorine gas upon contact with a battery and forced the submarine to resurface. At the surface, the sub was discovered and sunk by Allied forces. This case may not have been due to malfunction, but rather the possibility that the pressurized flushing system in the U-boats, which was extremely complex and required training force to operate. Wait, you need to take a class to take a dump? That... That's crazy. Wait, Ufert Latrine disaster of 1184 caused the death of at least 60 people, and most of them being nobles. Wait. George II of Great Britain died on the toilet. From an aortic dissection. A lot of yeah, I see your Elvis Presley died using the toilet. You don't wanna went I was talking about death rashes. I don't know where this came from. <laughs> well I mean yeah, you're the one that linked this to me. <laughs> I was just talking about death erections, man. I was just like, it was a medical question I had. I don't know where this came from. Dying on the toilet. 
you the one that linked it at me. Excuse me? No, and, and, and now we're going to go back to talk about the episode. <laughs> I think you told me about this, and I think you've already found a way to get to Hitler in under three clicks. You're proud of this, aren't you? I don't know if this is anything to be proud of. I can't believe that that many things that connect you, that connect you to Hitler. I can't see you right now, but I'm shaking my head. Uh, try Superman. See if we can you can get the freaking Hitler from Superman. I'm pretty sure there's probably a way, and it probably is. Okay, how about a. Uh, That's more than three clicks, right? How about IHOP? Yeah, you just go get waffles from IHOP. While Jock is playing his own version of the crying game, we'll uh, continue with the episode. <laughs> So the episode begins, uh, we get a flashback to Starling Stripes uh, back in America. Because she's, I guess this is like a flashback showing us a little bit more of how she is. And we get a glimpse into her personality and uh, the people around her. Um, shows that, you know, that she uh, she's pretty selfless and very hero-like. Uh, later on in the episode, we find out apparently she's viewed as like the world's greatest hero. That's something I did not know about her. I also want to point out too that I actually found out that she ends up dying many, many 
like, I think maybe a year or so more ago. Thank you, Google. I'm talking to you. Um, what transpired after that, though, I did not know, which was kind of cool, but we'll get to that in a minute. And it involves our quirk, but, um, you see that the men that she just served in the military with, you know, uh, she brings up the fact that, like, she, like, there's only so much power she could, like, imbue. And a lot of people are telling her that sometimes it's, like, it's, like, a mental thing and apparently has something to do with her gender. Which, when they, she just said that, I was like, wow, that seems kind of sexist. But then the people, her friends around her talk about, like, nah, you don't, you're, it's not about that. That was kind of cool. Of course, work on the mental level. And it's because you're a girl, which is kind of, it's kind of messed up. But then, like, her, like her friends around here tell her, like, you're, you're, you're plenty strong enough. If you need more strength, you can lean, lean on them. Which is kind of cool, because after that, because we flash back to the fight with Shigaraki and her. Gonna, hold on, I'm going to pause real quick. Did you find a way to heal her yet? Mm. Just to yourself, you asked me to give you something, and you said you do it anything, so I just figured why not the initial house of pancakes. Nothing. I had stopped to check on you after talk I talk about a little bit. And I was like, you said I left you behind, so I'm just like I'm sitting here like just like browsing my phone. He is dedicated to somehow. I don't know how many times if we give you, we could say Hitler in this episode. <laughs> Again, while he's focusing on that, I won't try to go too fast here. It's like at least he gives him time to. Hitler. I keep on saying these words and the sentences with Hitler in it. But yet, after her flashback with her men, she then uh, we come back to her fighting with Shigaraki, and uh, her holding Shigaraki down with this. Apparently, I guess, very infinite uh, pole of uh, light energy, I guess what I'm going to call it. I'm not sure if lasers, I think lasers are. She made it out of a laser. Yeah, she gathered, she gathered them with her air avatar, apparently. Commanded it to do it, to do it that way. If I remember correctly, that's how she did it. She used a new order to do that. He is seriously trying to do this. <laughs> He's not gonna sleep tonight over this. Okay, continue. She keeps Shigaraki da pinned down with this giant laser thing that apparently doesn't seem to run out. I guess. I guess because it's new. Because new order. She keeps him pinned down. Apparently, it's 
only strong enough to keep Shigaraki from regenerating, which I think we also skipped over last episode when we were reviewing. That he, uh, she do, she's doing that mainly to keep him from regenerating. And successful at doing it. And then the Tiamat missiles make it to her, but not before Shigaraki realizes what's going on. And uh, she uses one hand, grabs the, uh, the grabs all the missiles into, into it. Apparently the missiles are strong enough that they pull her avatar its arm and send her flying a little bit and then she, uh as she's about to she commands the team of lasers to say um they just like they move what is that wording she use now i'm just looking at the wording she used for when she was controlling the team missiles She uses new order on them and says something uh, to command, I guess, one of them. Apparently she imposed the role that she used. Okay, she says she's TMI will be redirected. Apparently using it on just one of the missiles gives her enough leverage to move in for her special move, which has got a very long name. And she directs it at Shigaraki, uh, who... We have a shadowy figure literally jump out of the water at her as she lands the punch. It causes a giant crater, an explosion, like a nuke was was launched. I think she called it intercontinental something or other. I completely forgot the name of the move she... Uh, really testing the uh, limits of... State-of-the-art hypersonic intercontinental cruise punch. That is a long name. <laughs> what? I mean, maybe not. I mean, she, she had to use this move before, though. I mean, it's a super move. And when she asked for the missiles to be launched, too, they were all shocked, so she's done this before. At least, like, one time. She's used this once. And it lands the punch directly on what she thinks is Shigaraki, because we learn soon after, in the aftermath, that can be seen from where Endeavor's group is. This giant explosion I thought was kind of cool. It's like, good gracious, that was a huge, uh, that, that was an impact you could see from around the world. Uh, there's this, just, there's this, like, uh, the seas are parted in a circle, and there's this hole in the ground. And, like, uh, as she's looking down to see if she got him, he jumps out of the he, he jumps out of the crater really messed up he's like skinned and everything just looking crazy yelling i want your quirk is like think about it right now it's like he's like this sounds like someone like huh oh okay. <laughs> i don't know if he's really a zombie because obviously will be undead he's not really dead i mean the man is regenerating faster because he's no longer he no longer has the you know, has a laser preventing him from regenerating. I mean, yeah, he should be dead. Any any normal person would have been dead off of that one, but no, he he was still living. And as I, as I kept on seeing, as he was like charging at Star, I was like wondering, I was like, are they going to show him regenerating? Because he all he's seeing is his muscle fibers and everything, his insane look. But yeah, we see him slowly regenerating as he's getting closer to her, and he's jumping onto uh, you know the, the Star Bombers and whatnot as he's getting up to her. And she's looking up there, trying to figure out what her next move is. Her men try to get to her, but she just looks back at them and smiles as his hand is reaching her face. And um, pretty much she's just smiling, and then he touches her face. And at first I thought maybe he was just trying to decay her, but there was a red light before all that happened from his hand, and apparently that's his hand to take quirks. And uh, at first it seems like She's trying to, you know, impose a, uh, as after the, after he lets go of her, she starts decaying. She imposes a role in his quirk saying, I, your star will not decay. Apparently he says like, I agree. And the, uh, apparently she says that apparently just the, uh, the stamina in which her quirk had imposed on her was too much. And it gave up. She starts, she starts decaying as, as she is falling to, uh, through the air. Uh, quite heroically, by the way, um, he's, uh, Shigarok is about to, you know, use a new order only for him to start exploding from the inside. <laughs> this is when we learn that, uh, Star, before, 
Siraki even managed to touch her and pose a role on her quirk, saying that New Order would not work with other quirks in, in the same body. And I thought that was actually interesting and another reason why I like the creator of this manga. I would have never thought to do that. But I guess it makes sense she can impose any order she wants on anything as long as like it's either non-human or human. Never uh, New Order literally is destroying his quirks, apparently. It just says it throughout the entire- uh, they say it throughout the entire day while it's happening. Oh, because it can't exist with itself either. Either that or there's a time limit. I think from the sounds of it, it sounds like it just could not exist because it, it was- it, it, I guess it was one of those really weird, really stupid loopholes that exist in fantasy. Or sometimes, like, so, you know, something can't exist with itself or something like that. Probably look for the exact wording that, like, I thought it was freaking impressive that that's what she did. I was like, I was surprised she could, and, and you know, do that kind of thing. But I guess that's maybe that's her quirk at its max, at its full power is just like telling it to do what she wants it to do, imposing her will on him. Apparently, like, as this is happening and he's blowing up, apparently his reflect quirk was destroyed, which I thought was, like, interesting. Because at the same time, it's not like, you know, off one can't give him the quirks back. Yeah, as she is falling and decaying and losing her body, she's looking back at her men, and then at first she makes a fist and then salutes them. As she slowly, you know, just turns into decayed bits of human skin and whatnot. And we see her with All Might again in the woods. She's smiling and, you know, she's like this. She's She says this is her way to pay back All Might for saving her. Congratulations. Really should not be allowed to use World War II. You seem to easily get to it from there. Mm. Well, congratulations. I guess we can get back on on the train of the episode. Um, I sh no, it's no problem. As like as the Shigaraki is blowing up and losing, you know, having a fight with uh, New Order and his body, Shigaraki starts panicking and says, "I gotta get, I I gotta get this quirk out of me." Well, unfortunately, I can't just discard a quirk. Apparently, which is something we now learn too is that you know he can't just discard a quirk. I never thought about, it, but I was like, I guess it makes sense that he can't discard it if his quirk is to give and take. Um, he starts looking for a body to give this quirk to. Which I'm actually kind of surprised he just didn't try to break into one of the star bombers and give the quirk to them. I was kind of wondering why he was running away from them. Um, the star was out of commission. She was literally falling into the to the sea. She couldn't do anything about it. Another, another, other heroes are literally far away from them. Like it take it, it take them too long to get to him before he you know unleashed it. But he starts running away. Apparently he took the bat wings from earlier from the Nomu that he launched, which I forgot to mention that Nomu it was on that shadow that was that jumped right jumped right at Star from that from that water from that hole in the water was actually Nomu. We learn that later. Um and he took the, before he did that, he took the wing quirk from it and then used it to get away. 
and he is like running away trying to figure out like who he wants to, he needs to give the quirk to because it's he's gonna apparently cease to exist the words he uses and as this is happening Shuriki is cursing all might because it's always him <laughs> Which I thought was interesting. I mean, every time, like, er I guess every time the Shiraz tried to, try to do anything, All Might seems to be the person that's always influencing somebody. So, yeah. He always he views All Might as, like, the ultimate obstacle, even if All Might isn't actively doing anything. And, uh, yeah, as Star dies and salutes... As another, like, you know, as Sugar is cursing All Might, you know, sees her as just like All Might sent her to stop him. We also learned from, um, from All for One, apparently, Star going off on her own to come to Japan wasn't in his plans, and he was afraid that she was, if, if that was going to happen, you know, he needs to use Shigaraki before he was fully complete, which is another interesting little bit of information, too. All, like, All for One really did not want, like, uh, he wanted her quick, but he didn't want her, like, acting on her own which unfortunately for him she did Shigaraki gets away and then we come we go to it we come to a house I guess uh where uh two I guess apparently two thieves at least one of them is a thief for sure I'm not sure the other one is or I should say a criminal I guess the, I guess the girl's a criminal too and um they're arguing they're like talking to each other and then there's a crack in the wall and shigaraki comes through with his hair long again i think they're just deciding when to and when to not have shigaraki's hair really long i thought that was kind of crazy well he screams a lot I mean, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like that. And then he grabs the guy and it sends new, it tries to send new order into him, but then the new order quirk that talks back to him apparently, um, you know, exclaiming that like it's you know, you know, like I'm not gonna go anywhere until like I disintegrate because apparently like what Jock says, which is kind of weird, I will say what what it says. Let me just say I can't get the wording that it said. Hopefully this doesn't get me. I've already kind of shown up quite a few animations, so we'll see what happens to this this video. <laughs> uh, New Order will uh, oppose other quirks. Thanks to all those quirks you have, I will also be caught in the backlash and disappear. It sounds like the quirk was saying that New Order will oppose other quirks. That I guess that also includes it for some reason. Like maybe, um, may, maybe she did that on purpose. Maybe the, the order was like, maybe the order she gave wasn't wasn't like precise enough. Maybe, maybe it maybe if you say New Order will oppose other quirks, but New Order, maybe that's what would make it not disappear. I have no idea. Maybe her saying Quark's new order is like new order is such a basic principle that maybe it needs it, it needs per, um it needs precise words. Yeah, like maybe it's very basic. Maybe it's like she's able to put rules on something, but a new order is such a like a a um not a nuanced thing, but like it's such it's such like an overall thing. Like maybe it like as because she she has to say the words out loud right, or she has to like say the words and be conscious of what she's trying to do. Like maybe it's such a basic and it's such a primitive ability that because all it does is affect things and add power to it. So there's a possibility that maybe it's such a primitive thing that um in and of itself, if we believe that quirks are entities of their own selves too. Uh, which I think based on this episode, I, I, I want to say, yeah, I think they are entities of their own in their own way. But um, it's possible that maybe it's such a primitive thing that it, it doesn't like because she used the word quirk. It didn't exclude itself in, in, in that in that premise. So it destroyed itself. 
as like a as a as a, as a like a, uh, a as a as a as a backup. That's kind of like what I was saying. That maybe she worded it that way on purpose, so that way it would also do that to itself. This is the best way I can put it, which is a very convoluted way to put it. But like, basically, she said it will oppose all of the quirks. All the quirks also would include itself. If she had said New Order will oppose all the quirks but itself, then maybe. It, it, maybe it wouldn't have destroyed itself in the process. Which I want to talk about that real quick though. That's just, I was not anticipating. I already knew that she was going to die. I did not know this part. <laughs> Thanks to Google. Again, I'm telling you, because it knows that I'm watching or interested in something, Google itself will direct me. It will give me, like, um, it will give me a thumbnail, maybe, or it will talk about something happening in the manga much earlier. So, like, this popped up. I didn't say anything at the time, because I think we were reviewing last season. And she wasn't even she wasn't even like a, a thought process in the, in the show at that point. I didn't remember who she was until I saw her, but um, but you know, I saw this thanks to Google. And it's not like I'm going after it. It's just one of those Google News or recommended things that pops up. It recommends me something. It does it every day because it's tracking everything I'm doing. Darn you! I almost said Bill Gates, but that's not him. No, I'm not gonna blame Bill Gates. Oh, I wish I could blame Bill Gates for this. He's just he's just in his he's just in his house eating his dinner, and he just hears my voice. Bill Gates, what the heck was that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I haven't seen Clippy in a while. That's horrible. He wants his soul back. If there's anything that ever gets clipped off these podcast videos, I hope that is what gets, what gets clipped. <laughs> I've never looked at Clippy long enough for that to be a thing. I've always, like, I hit the X button. <laughs> Calm down, calm down, Spear. Clippy can't hurt you anymore. Calm down, Clippy can't hurt you anymore.
Wow, what the heck? <laughs> the moment Clippy gets sent to us, I'm turning the computer down and burning it. <laughs> it's like, like that. That is not, I'm not letting Clippy get out, so to speak. That computer is going down, and I'm going to try to burn down the internet. Because Clippy does not need to get out of the world of the internet. Like, it's got too much control over the, over the world wide web as we speak. But, um,. That'd be interesting little like I guess emote, but I'm not gonna worry about that. But uh, as but yeah, New Order is interesting. It's too bad the New Order was here and it gone so quickly, but I guess it makes sense. Can't have that kind of power running around rampant. So, especially without like the a user using it correctly. It sounds like Oprah One did not want her joining up with Midoriya. I guess one thing before before we move on here, uh, I, as as uh, as the will of New Order is passing off, um, it says that someone who inherits the spirit of a hero will destroy you without fail. And Shigaraki hears this, and we see him revert back to his kid form, and then he says the word Midoriya, and then she just disappears. So now Shigaraki has got his eyes set on Midoriya now. I mean, he already had his eyes set on him, but like, I was like, oh dear, you know, he's already pissed off that All Might seems to keep showing up, even if it isn't him in reality. He's seeing all these people that are trying to stop him as like All Might's successors. And he sees, he sees that Midoriya is, is like the person that inherits the will of the hero. But he sees Midoriya as an actual threat. Yeah, after all that mess comes like after all that mess uh, subsides apparently the um the world government well the world japan is sitting out um the military or whatever to go out and search for shigaraki after um after everything died down and, and like they were uh, as far as i can tell they were unable to figure out where he was they are assuming that he's not he's that he is um that he's he's alive but he's also been um extremely uh hampered because they uh believe that uh, New Order took out quite a few of his abilities. They don't think they took it. They, they don't believe New Order took out all its all its course. We think they took out a substantial amount of them, which is crazy. Cause I thought maybe based on the imaging they were using with New Order that she took out all his abilities, but I'm guessing maybe not. Maybe it wasn't there long enough for that to be a possibility. We gotta leave Shigaraki with his main quirk. One for all kind of has that, but we look at one for all, and he's like, he's still like a, a man without a face, literally. Yeah, everybody's looking for all, uh, looking for Shigaraki and all for one. Uh, shoot, don't, no, don't, don't have that, don't, don't have that running. Now everybody is like mourning Star, like the America is like uh, now mourning Star, for what um you know for the contribution she made. There's a picture of a uh, Star with All Might, I guess back when he was much younger. And apparently I'm thinking America. Hmm? When the stars a weapon? Hold up. I 
I know what they look like. I just never knew their name. Uh, I always called him a spiky ball club. I mean, they, that's why. I can ask what their actual name was. Too. Yeah, now Stars and Stripes is dead, and she, you know, before she left, she did some actual damage to uh, Sugar Rocky. And not everybody can like, have that claim. Uh, I forget. Um, in the picture that that uh guy that uh um that mutant guy um that Star got the uh, confirmation to use the Tiamat was, when the picture that he's looking at uh, with a uh, Star and All Might in it, uh, I forgot his name. I think it's Billy. I forgot his name, but he's from he's from one of the movies because he doesn't show up in the anime. <laughs> like All Might's first psychic, I think. What do we hear about in the movies? He's like wearing a white coat and I guess a red hoodie. You're probably not remembering, but um, yeah, I recognize, I recognize him. But yeah, she is uh, they just like the last reference that they're gonna give to her that showing that you know they showed her in a movie. It was like a brief second, but she showed up in the movie. Uh, now, Star's group, uh, like team that she came with, it gave All Might. Um, later on, the, uh, after everything's been settled down, uh, Star's group gives apparently their ship had been logging on information from like Sugar Rocky's fight with her. Whether that was interesting, it wasn't. I didn't know they were doing that as they were fighting, but I guess it makes sense. Give them as much as they need so they can um, fight Shigaraki on an even playing field. But like, all the biometric data they had when he was fighting her, uh, and also all the uh, you know information on the quirks he was using, and they gave that to All Might. And All Might, uh, for instance, takes the information and they're going to use that to study up on Shigaraki. And the first man mentioned that you know they're probably going to do it regardless uh, without the information, but you know it's it's a good thing they got that now. And also they're saying they're gonna lend them like the stealth bombers that they have brought with them as well which i guess is cool that you know at least america's helping out they later only find out that you know the entire world's like withdrawn support to deal with the you know deal with their own villains in their own countries which makes sense but it kind of sucks that cat cop Yeah, no, I know. I'm not saying it's a bad decision. I just, I'm just, I'm just saying it kind of sucks. This cat cop. No, I agree with you. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying that in general, it, you know, you um, know, it just sucks that you know. Well, now you know they're not getting help from anybody else. You know, they got as much help as they got from America, and they lost their greatest hero. Uh, trying, trying to help, um, trying to help Japan out. I'm wondering who like America's second greatest hero is. Is it like a Batman person? <laughs> <laughs> I had to ask, or Iron Man possibly, because or is head isn't like number two though. Is he? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they have their own version of Razorhead though, regardless, <laughs> whoever that guy is. Again, I just I said there's like this world of my hero is so flush for fanfic. I haven't seen any, but I suspect there's a lot of fanfiction of my hero. The vigilante is proof of another thing too. It's like vigilante is like, it's a different story told in the hero, my hero academia world, um, with different characters, but also connecting to this world too, with showing some characters. Because apparently, 
Uh, Raise the Head shows up in that one. Uh, Endeavor shows up in that one. Um, what's her name? I forgot her name. Uh, is it Midnight? The woman, um, the woman with the uh, with the perfume ability. Oh, yeah, and she shows up in there too. They look a little bit different though. Like she's like in civilian gear. But yeah, like this world's really ripe for it. But um, after that information, they uh, you know, the help they're gonna get from America. Then we go back to the um the dorms. Uh, with All Might uh, explaining the situation to them, saying that you know Shigaraki has been you know, he's taken a, a a big hit, um, but they suspect that like I think the you know they'll like they suspect by the, in another week, um, Shigaraki will be a full you know be complete by that point, with all of all for one helping him out, he'll be, he'll be fully complete. So that's what you know they uh, have to use utilize their time appropriately, and train, uh. Uh, you know, they get an extension on a week and they get to the, the train to you know maximize their abilities and get as power, get as strong as they can. As All Might is saying that Bakugo being Bakugo says, "What do you think you've been doing this entire time?" Which I thought was cool. That it seems like when ba when Deku left, everybody else just went to train. Which I thought was really interesting that they revealed the information out to us. And I was like, okay, so they were training as much as they could. Well, you know, Midoriya was being Midoriya, saving one person at a time. While the world was uh, afraid of All Might, and, and, and you know the world was like in, was in disarray, and he's trying to help out. I thought that was kind of cool that Baka was like, "What do you think we've been doing this entire time?" And um, Deku brings up, you know, that each one of them wanted to help him spar. Bakugo also being a awkward teen, it's like, "I didn't say that. Did you get your ears broken?" <laughs> I was like, "Well, I guess he's back to normal now after having that heartfelt moment with with Deku earlier on last season." No, she doesn't look pregnant. They probably just threw, they just probably drew her a little bit thicker. Um, one thing apparently, and I wasn't that aware of this. Um, she wasn't as curvy in the in the uh, in the manga. Apparently, this that was something they did to her in the in the anime. Like a lot of characters got, I guess, a little bit curvier when they weren't in the manga. So it's possible. It's possible that maybe they, she's she's just thicker apparently now. It probably doesn't help that she's also wearing a pink jacket and her hair is up. It could be just be the art style, cause like um, they everybody is kind of drawn a little bit differently. Even like Midoriya has kind of got a lot more of like a defined, like like let them know how they want to draw them now. Even though we're like seven seasons in. Yeah, as all my is like t telling this to Midoriya, is like Star left everything, left uh, left this to us. To help take down Shigaraki and all for one. Um, after Bakugo goes gloating, he wants to, Bakugo says he wants to go take on all for one and see what his cluster ab uh, ability can do now against him, which is cool. Now we got a name for you know that that sparkle explosion that he did last season as well. Now he's calling it a cluster. Explosions? I don't know. Fire?
I was trying to avoid that. I think he's grown as a character. I mean, he reverted back to normal, but I mean, again, it's like the whole thing with Vegeta. You know, like, would you want to see Baka go act any other way? We, you know, I think it'd be kind of weird. checking really I think he's a lot better than he was in episode one because I mean episode one he was looking down on Deku at this point he's not he's just being he's just being an awkward teenager now because he can't take back what he said to Deku that's for sure You yeah, know they're ready, and like uh, as like everybody is like having a talk among themselves. All Might is having a, he's like he's like remembering when he first took him out to cl uh, training, um, and he called him Zygotes at that time. I remember to look this look to see if there was any significance between Zygote. But then he says they all hatched and they spread their wings now. So I was like, huh, is that a bird reference? Is a cell. I guess he's also just calling them babies at that time and they got they got they grown now and they're stronger now. And they're in they're they're in their um their dorm. They don't, they don't, they don't. This is a school. I mean, I don't even think they could afford different color slippers. I was, after I said that, I was like, this is UA. This is like the top hero school, but you know. What is Ida wearing? I'm just not noticing this. Like Ida at like 1845 has got this really weird looking armor or suit on. It's almost like a track suit. Which I guess makes sense because he's a runner, but. Oh, uh, you know, like to go to the training thing with Deku, like um, Hiroshima says, like you can punch me all you want. And I was like, he, they, uh, and the um, take guy is like he's just trying to keep on to his job as a punching bag. I'm like, geez, that's really harsh. But, you know, but I guess that they're all this, they're still kids and whatnot. That's the way I look at it. I think Black was changed enough to the point where like I don't, you know, could he act a little bit differently since he's talked to Deku and had that conversation with him? Possibly, but they're rivals right now, so they need to like keep the um back and forth going. It's not like it's not like Bakugo like bullies Deku anymore. So I think he's done some significant changing. Like he's looking at Bakugo as like actual. I mean, Bakugo's looking at Deku as like an actual rival versus like some kid that he doesn't like. Oh, Kirishima in the middle of that is like Todoroki is off to the side, but like is as uh, Deku and Bakugo are looking at each other, uh, Kirishima just got this like, "Come on, hit me!" <laughs> I 
I might have once, but probably not all the way. I remember not really liking it that much. Look at such an inconvenient superpower. <laughs> you can't stop flying. <laughs> He's just comic relief. There is fight, have a serious spot, uh, fight, punches. It is a. What the heck is that? It's like. Moon just says H A instead of C H A because they got rid of the C. And then there's a <clears throat> they get you know the Eater of Worlds like I forget what it is in MCU but there's like a character called that like eats planets. The Tick saves the world from uh, that character like in in his universe. And the uh, <laughs> you're such a jerk. No, um, I, I, uh, I just realized uh, we're like, it's already too late now. We're like 43 minutes, uh, an hour and we're through. You were not being heard. It's all right. I was talking to myself the entire time. It's all right. The, um, so then the Eater of Worlds character, like he talks him into not eating the world. And he, so the Eater of Worlds character says goodbye and like they're friends. And as he's flying off, he takes a bite out of the moon. So now the moon's got a giant bite out of it too. And uh, and then later in the one last thing that happens is they have an episode where they're fighting like evil corn stalks and a giant a giant flower, and uh, they have the flower sitting on a windowsill and they have a radio playing because the flower to stop its bad like growth like so that it grows out of control like they have to constantly play music to it. Mm -hmm. So the um. They have this song playing in the background and it's like my love keeps growing like a plant on a window ledge growing and growing and growing so much that your love sends me over the edge i take a bite out of the moon for you i take a bite of the moon for you and it's like and then uh the tick ends up on top of the flower as it's growing out of control later in the episode and the the flowers growing higher and higher into the night sky and you can see the moon in the background and all it's like messed up glory and and then he's up there and he has to make music to stop the the plant from growing so he starts opera singing to it he's like i side today today and it like stops growing it stops it from growing but it's funny because like if the tick was going to sing that's what it would have to sing it would have to be opera. It's the only thing big enough for him. Are you 
are you jumping to the um well, this is the end of the episode i was just saying we we already had made it to the end actually i was letting you complete that and also letting people know that i can, I can that they can hear you now but like for a good more part of that i was talking to myself and i apologize <laughs> All right. What about the uh, preview for the next episode? I didn't watch that. Um, oh, really? I tend to not. Okay. But like, the heck is happening? Is that? That's ingenious. It, it shows some cool like action scenes. It doesn't actually tell you anything. Good lord, Shigaraki, calm down. <laughs> But I liked I liked um, that they show the animal guy I forget his name and the tape guy and then uh, I liked that Froppy uses like her tongue in a really beast mode way like she's it's covered in rocks and she like flings her tongue up and down like whips it and it creates like a rain of like rocks which is kind of cool. Aren't frogs like tongues really sticky? <clears throat> yeah, but it's. The fact that she can lift all those rocks is like pretty big. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying, like you know, like um, I was trying to think, but like her powering up, like what would that look like? I guess the rock thing, her using her tongue for that, like she's human and having frog, having frog characters applied to it is like, huh? Yeah. Hey, so speaking, okay. I didn't see this part, but like Shigaraki is still dying. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, he's in really bad shape. All for one doesn't seem too bothered by it. Well, he's got a plan, as he yeah. always does. I mean, like all for one never seems to be bothered. He may had his face blown up at one point, and he's never he wasn't bothered. Yeah, he's got a re he's really well adjusted. <laughs> I mean, I'd be adjusted too if I was just a mouth. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I've been bothered by that the entire show. I have, I always expected when he first showed up, I was like, I was thinking, okay, maybe he's gonna gain a face at some point in the show, and he doesn't. Like he just, nope. he just, he just, he's like, I'm he comfortable left like the this face now. He used to at least have like some indents in his in his face area that like hinted that like an eye, and you don't even really see those now. He just like he's just totally like. I mean, yeah, all might just like he remodeled his face. <laughs> He had plastic surgery so that he doesn't look like he has eyes anymore or ears <laughs> or a nose that's what happens when you have all my gold 100 percent on your face like i mean don't have to pan for anything but if you look at him he's got great teeth yeah that's the, he's got a good dentist he's got good dental care <laughs> yeah he's got excellent dental unless those are like some sort of like fake teeth or something like that like he's got fantastic dental care he doesn't have eyeballs or nose or ears or any any distinguished features. He doesn't even have hair anymore. Like All Might must have punched the hair off of him. <laughs> but like, but every single one of his teeth is perfect. <laughs> I may not have actual distinguishing features, but my teeth are immaculate. Ching! It's my whole face. <laughs> <laughs> He must brush for like 45 minutes a day. I wonder if he can see, how he, he can even see his teeth at the band. <laughs> he just runs over them teeth with his tongue and they feel smooth and fresh. And he knows he's <laughs> good. He's got a quirk. A quirk that lets him check his teeth. I was about to say that. <laughs> he's got a quirk that like, lets him have his teeth stay minty fresh. Like he's got Colgate or something. In the form of work. His regeneration ability works on teeth, but not on eyeballs. That is weird, though. He looks like a planter's peanut. <laughs> oh, With a mouth. Okay, I think we're gonna end here before we <laughs> continue to roast him even more. He doesn't need to be roasted. <laughs> Like poor, but 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 Shigaraki isn't in good isn't in good uh, standing right now. I mean, you see him his body cracking. I was like, huh. I thought like I, I thought with uh, New Order leaving him, he'd be in less pain. But maybe New Order did more to him than we think. 
Yeah. Which is insane, but we'll guess we'll find that out next episode. Uh, let me just check to see. We're still continuing along the weekly release. What week are they coming out? Huh? What day of the week are they coming out? Saturday, I think. Okay. May 18th. That is this Saturday. Yep, it's still on the weekly release. Next episode, it's called Villain. That sounds promising. <laughs> that is not sarcastic. <laughs> well, they've decided to go on the move against him, so I guess they're going to take on the villain. This is a good time to fight him if he's really in that bad shape. Well, there's still training from my understanding, so they're probably not on the move just yet. Yeah. But they will be, is basically we what we know. Of. I they all said they were going to go together. That's what he made it seem like. So, I think that kind of meant, like, soon. Huh. I'm sorry, I'm just looking, I'm looking at like home video release in Japan for this season. This is Toho Animation release seventh season in, on Blu ray and DVD in three volumes in Japan, with the first volume releasing July 17th, 2024, and then the final volume coming out December 14th of this year. The final volume of. Um... I believe the final volume is season seven. Okay, not the whole anime. No, because they would have said this was the final season. They would have made a big deal about that. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm looking right now to see if there's anything I did I missed because I don't think they would have like they would have really made a big deal about it. But yeah, my my initial theory about what's gonna happen after you know having think about it for a while is that I think. What's going to happen is that we're going to continue this trend right now. We're going to get into like the final story arc of this, of this, you know, this idea, this IP, but they're going to cut us off at like maybe a really important part. And then we'll have season eight be, um, be the entirety of the rest of the, of the, of the manga. Cause I know, I know it's still going on. I don't know when it's supposed to end. I thought it was supposed to end at some point last year, but I, they're still going on. So. We'll know when the sh when the manga ends. It was I'll, I'll find out when it happens. Hopefully, while well, Google's saying anything more than j it, you know, is the final chapter got released. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not crossing my finger. I'm not like cro holding my breath on that one, but we'll see. It so far good. Uh, good start. Um, the end of the the end of the fight with Hurt Shigaraki really quick, but gotta appreciate the long game. Whatever the long game is. You guys next week you, need for... someone, you needed someone to knock him down a peg because like all of the top heroes in Midoriya were fighting were fighting him before and he was just wiping them out and he's gotten stronger since then and his like new body is supposed to be coming out soon which is going to be make him even stronger so they needed to do something to take a little power out of him so he's He's injured for a week, and they said she gave us an extension and acted like that's all that happened. But really, <clears throat> really, she gave him a weakened, like, Shigaraki, too. He's had a ton of his, like, quirks removed from him. Which is, which is insane, because, like, I think Nuro's the only quirk that's done that. I think Nuro's the only quirk that fought back. Yeah. I guess based on it, based on its um, this is a good this is a good song to end on, <laughs> um, but based on its like how like how it fundamentally works, it's the only quirk that can fight back. Well, so far that's been introduced. I wonder if there's any other quirks that can act like that. You know, they can just freaking fight back. 
it adds a whole new dimension to this whole quirk stealing and um, quirk giving. Oh, well, I guess with that, we're going to end here. See you guys next week for episode three review. Villain. That sounds ominous. See you guys next week. <laughs>